Hi. This is the second episode in this series about the Pan Crop Tool, native to Vegas Pro and Movie Studio Platinum. In this part, I'll be describing the tool in mask mode. As I mentioned in episode 1, the Pan Crop Mask function isn't available in Movie Studio Platinum. As such, this tutorial and episode 3 aren't applicable. As in episode 1, I'll concentrate on the user interface, describing it in detail. In the last episode, I'll demonstrate the different masking techniques available. As with episode 1, I'll be using Vegas Pro 19. Users of previous versions of Vegas Pro will find that certain icons look different. However, their function hasn't changed. Those of you who have watched my tutorials will realize that this isn't my voice. I thought I'd take this opportunity to demonstrate the new text-to-speech function available in the subscription version of Vegas Pro 19. Please note that this function is not available in the perpetual license version of Vegas Pro 19. Now, this is me. I warn you now, this is going to be a long one. It's necessarily long in order to cover, in detail, all the options and parameters that are available in the mask mode of the Pancrop tool. To demonstrate the user interface, I'll be creating masks on a solid colour media event. I'm doing this because it's easier to see the masks against a solid colour, rather than against a normal video event. I'll now open Pancrop for the event in a normal way. With the pan crop window opened, masking is initiated by selecting the mask checkbox situated to the left of the keyframe controller. This displays the mask tools and properties. Before proceeding, it's important to understand that a mask can exist in any one of three modes. The first is unselected, where the mask has a dotted line boundary only. This dotted line boundary is called a path. The second is part selected, where the mask has a path plus anchors. More on anchors later. The third is fully selected, where the mask has a path, plus anchors, plus a dotted circle surrounding the mask. As with the tool in pan crop mode, the window in mask mode consists of six sections. These are The plugin chain for a description of this section, please refer to my previous tutorial. The preset drop down list. Unlike the list in pan crop mode, this list by default contains just one entry. Custom presets can be saved in the same manner as described in my previous tutorial. The toolbar contains 10 tools that are used for creating and manipulating masks. The Properties This section contains parameters that affect the way the workspace and existing masks are displayed. The Workspace As in pan crop mode, the workspace consists of 81 segments. Each segment conforming to the aspect ratio of the source media. The source media sits in the middle of the workspace, but unlike in pan crop mode, it is fixed. Also, unlike pan crop mode, the right click context menu has different options, as you will see later. The keyframe controller. This section works exactly the same as in pan crop mode, 
but the timeline used is the bottom one. To avoid repeating myself, I'm going to describe only the sections that are different to the same sections in pan crop mode. These are the toolbar, the properties section and the workspace. The toolbar. Show properties. As in pan crop mode, this icon toggles the display of the properties window. The normal edit tool. This is used for selecting and modifying existing masks. By default the mouse cursor is hand shaped. In this mode the mouse can be used to move the workspace within its window. If the mouse is moved onto the path of a mask the cursor changes to the normal edit tool cursor. This indicates that the mask can be selected. When a mask is unselected, left double clicking anywhere on the mask path will fully select it. This enables the mask to be reshaped, resized and rotated. The mouse cursor shape will change to indicate the actions that can be taken where the cursor is located. When a mask is unselected, left clicking anywhere on the mask path will partially select it. This allows anchor points to be selected and moved to create irregular shaped masks. You'll notice that when a mask is partially selected, anchor design varies. I'll talk about this variation shortly. As mentioned earlier, left clicking and holding anywhere other than mask paths will allow the workspace to be moved by dragging. Note that holding the control key down in this mode will temporarily change the mode to anchor creation, which I'll talk about next. If the mouse is over an anchor when the control key is held down, the mode is temporarily changed to split tangent. More about tangents later. The Anchor Creation Tool When selected, the mouse cursor changes to a pen nib shape and is used for placing anchors on existing masks or for creating new masks. As described earlier, a mask consists of a number of anchors arranged in the shape of the mask. Each anchor is connected to the next one by a dotted line, referred to as a segment. More about segments later. With a mask partially selected, its anchors exist in one of two states, selected or unselected. Whether or not an anchor is selected determines what actions can be applied to that anchor using the workspace context menu. I'll talk about this menu near the end of this tutorial. To select an anchor in this mode, first hold the control key down. This will change the mode temporarily to normal edit mode, allowing anchors to be selected. 
If more than one anchor needs selecting, hold the shift key down as well as the control key and left click each anchor that needs selecting. An anchor in its default unselected mode is depicted as a white square containing a black frame. A black square indicates an anchor that has been selected. Hovering the mouse over a selected anchor will highlight it with yellow. Any anchor that has been selected with it will also be highlighted along with the segment or segments between them. When highlighted, segments change from a black and white dash line to a black and yellow dash line. When the mouse is hovered over the segment between two anchors, the segment and the anchors at either end of the segment will be highlighted. Now back to the anchor creation tool. When working on an existing mask, left clicking anywhere on the mask path will partially select the mask and create an anchor at that point. Left clicking anywhere other than an existing mask path will create an anchor at that point. Subsequent clicking will create further anchors that are connected to the previous anchor. Clicking on the first anchor will complete the mask. Hovering over an existing anchor will change the mode to split tangent. This is confirmed by the mouse cursor changing to an inverted V shape and allows a tangent to be created at that anchor. More about tangents later. Anchor deletion tool. This is used for deleting existing anchors. Split Tangent Tool This tool allows each side of a tangent, that's the line that intersects anchors, to act independently, instead of in unison. Hover the mouse pointer over an anchor and the cursor changes to an inverted V-shape. Click a tangent point to enable. Each click toggles the mode. I'll be dealing with tangents in episode 3. Note that if the mouse is hovered over a segment, the cursor temporarily changes to anchor creation mode. This allows anchors to be created without the need to change tools. Rectangle or Square Mask Creation Tool As its name implies, this is used to create a rectangular or square mask. Using different key combinations while creating the mask will create different varieties. Left click and drag the mouse to create a rectangular or square mask. Left click plus hold the Alt key down and drag the mouse to create a rectangular or square mask with rounded corners. Left click plus hold the shift key down and drag the mouse to create a square mask.
Left click plus hold the Shift and Alt key down and drag the mouse to create a square mask with rounded corners. Left click plus hold the control key down and drag the mouse to create a rectangular or square mask which sizes equally about its centre. Left click plus hold the control and alt key down and drag the mouse to create a rectangular or square mask with rounded corners which sizes equally about its centre. Left click plus hold the control and shift key down and drag the mouse to create a square mask which sizes equally about its centre. Oval or Circle Mask Creation Tool As its name implies, this is used to create an oval or circle mask. As with the rectangle or square mask creation tool, using different key combinations while creating the mask will create different varieties. Left click and drag the mouse to create an oval or circle mask. Left click plus hold the Alt key down and drag the mouse to create a semi-oval or semi-circle mask. Left click plus hold the Shift key down and drag the mouse to create a circle mask. Left click plus hold the Shift and Alt key down and drag the mouse to create a semicircle mask. Left click plus hold this control key down and drag the mouse to create an oval or circle mask which sizes about its centre. Left click plus hold the control and alt key down and drag the mouse to create a semi oval or semicircle mask which sizes about its radial centre. Left click plus hold the control and shift key down and drag the mouse to create a circle mask which sizes equally about its centre. The Zoom Edit tool If enabled, this displays the workspace cursor as a magnifying glass containing a plus sign. Left clicking anywhere in the workspace zooms in. Right clicking zooms out. Each click of the mouse doubles or halves the percentage zoom. The cursor position determines the center of the display after zooming. You disable the Zoom Edit tool by clicking on any of the other tools except Show Properties, Enable Snapping or the Move Freely tools. You can use the mouse scroll wheel at any time to perform the same function. This always zooms to the centre of the display irrespective of where the mouse cursor is. Enable snapping. A 
Enabling this causes existing anchor points to snap to a grid when they are moved. For this feature to function, the mask must be partially selected. Note that holding the shift key down while dragging an anchor temporarily overrides the snapping. You'll notice that selected anchors will move in unison while unselected ones remain static. The size of the grid is determined by a setting in the Workspace Parameters section. Move freely X or Y. This icon toggles between Move Freely X or Y, Move in X Direction Only, Move in Y Direction Only. With the mask partially selected, allows anchor movement only in the direction selected. With the mask fully selected, mask movement is allowed only in the direction selected, but anchors may be moved in any direction. Properties section. I'll work down this list from the top. The mask option has just one parameter, apply to FX. When FX are applied to the plugin chain, they'll be applied to all the masks in the workspace. The apply to FX parameter determines how the unmasked area will be displayed. This is a little tricky to get your brain around but I'll be dealing with the application of effects to masks in part three. Position. The X and Y coordinates simply determine where the center of the selected mask is located in the source frame. If more than one mask is selected, these coordinates represent the center of the combination of masks. Path. This subsection consists of five parameters. Mode. A mask can exist in one of three modes. Positive. This is the default mode and causes the area inside the mask to be masked and causes any event on the track below to show through the unmasked area. Negative. This causes anything outside the mask to be masked resulting in any event on the track below showing through the masked area. Disabled. Self-explanatory. Note that when the mask is disabled, the remaining four parameters are disabled.
an important thing to be aware of when dealing with multiple masks. They exist hierarchically. That is to say, the first one to be created is the primary one. The second one to be created is the secondary one, and so on. If the mode of all the masks is positive, the default, then all is well. However, if there are some negative masks, the hierarchy determines how each mask behaves. The dominant mask is the primary one, so if this is positive, all negative masks will effectively be disabled. If the primary mask is negative, then all positive masks will effectively be disabled. It's important to be aware of this when creating graphical elements using multiple masks. I'll be dealing with this subject in episode 3. Anti-alias. Yes is the default setting for this parameter. This attempts to smooth out curves at the mask boundary. Setting this to no will cause curves to be stepped. Opacity. This simply changes the opacity of the selected mask. The default value of 100% applies the mask fully. 0% makes the mask transparent. Feather type. This parameter has four settings and applies to the selected mask. None, which is the default. No feathering is applied to the mask boundary. In applies feathering to the inside of the mask boundary. Out applies feathering to the outside of the mask boundary. Both applies feathering to both the inside and the outside of the mask boundary. Feather percent. When a feather is applied to the mask boundary, this value determines the degree of feathering. This parameter is disabled when the feather type is none. The workspace. The parameters in this subsection have the same function as those in pancrop mode. For more detail, please refer to tutorial 44. The workspace window. I described the workspace earlier in the tutorial. Now I'm going to deal with the workspace context menu. This is the menu that opens up whenever you right click anywhere in the workspace window. This menu contains 11 options five of which contain sub-options. The availability of these sub-options depends upon where the mouse pointer is when the context menu is launched. In other words, when you right-click. I'll deal with each of the 11 options in turn. Reset mask. 
Select this option to reset the workspace to its default state. All masks will be deleted. You've seen how this option works during this tutorial. Select. Hover the mouse over this option and a submenu will open displaying four sub options. Anchor. Anchor is only available when the cursor is over an unselected anchor. When available, selecting it will select the affected anchor. Segment. At this point it's worth explaining what's meant by a segment. A segment is any part of the mask path that lies between two anchors. The number of segments in any one mask is only limited by the number of anchors. This sub-option is only available when the cursor is over a segment where none or only one of its anchors are selected. Path. This simply means the mask boundary complete. In other words, the sum of all the segments. This sub-option is available when the cursor is over a segment or anchor, whether selected or not. Selecting this changes the partially selected mask to a fully selected one. All. This sub-option is available wherever the cursor is. Selecting this will change any partly or unselected mask to fully selected ones. If there is more than one mask, all will be fully selected and combined together. Deselect. This reveals the same sub-options as those displayed for the select option. The action of these sub-options is the opposite of those in the select sub-option list. For instance, if I over the pointer over selected anchor, then right click and go to deselect, then anchor and select, the anchor will be deselected. Delete. This option reveals six sub-options. Again, their availability will depend upon where the mouse pointer is when the right-click menu is launched. Anchor. This will delete the anchor under the mouse pointer, whether selected or not.
Segment. This will delete the segment under the mouse pointer. Path selection. At this stage, I need to explain what's meant by path selection. It's tricky to understand and initially caused me some confusion, so here goes. Consider a mask with multiple anchors. To demonstrate, I'll add two additional anchors to the bottom and right hand segments of one of the masks. I'll now select these two anchors and also the bottom right hand corner anchor. These three anchors will now be black squares, signifying that they are all selected. In this particular case, the path selection will be the two segments connecting the three anchors, plus the segments either side of the two anchors I added. Put simply, a path selection consists of all segments that are connected to selected anchors. So, selecting this sub-option when the mouse pointer is over any part of a path selection will delete that path selection. Path. The term path is used to describe the complete mask boundary. Selecting this sub-option while the mouse pointer is over any part of a mask boundary, whether unselected or partly selected, will delete the mask. All selected. This sub-option is only available when one or more mask elements are selected. Selecting this sub-option when it's available will delete all selected mask elements. All. This sub-option is available wherever the cursor is. Selecting this will delete all masks from a workspace. Initialize tangents. I mentioned tangents earlier when I described the split tangent tool. The initialize tangents option contains six sub options. As with all sub-options, availability depends upon where the mouse pointer is when the right-click context menu is launched. Anchor. Only available when the mouse pointer is over an anchor, whether the mask is unselected or partially selected. Selecting this will create a tangent for that anchor. Note that a tangent will cause a curvature of the segments associated with that anchor. Segment. Only available when the mouse pointer is over a segment, whether the mask is unselected or partially selected. This creates a similar result to the anchor sub-option, the difference being that tangents are created for the anchors at either end of the segment.
Path Selection. This sub-option is only available for partially selected masks. Selecting this when the mouse pointer is over a segment will create tangents on the anchors associated with the selected path. Path. When selected while the mouse pointer is over a segment, this sub-option will create tangents on all the mask anchors. The sub-option is only available for unselected or partially selected masks. All selected. This sub-option is available anywhere in the workspace. Selecting this will create tangents on all selected mask anchors for all the masks in the workspace. All. This sub-option is also available anywhere in the workspace. Selecting this will create tangents for all mask anchors on all masks in the workspace, whether selected or not. Hide Tangents. This option has the same six sub-options as those in the Initialize Tangents option. The difference is that these sub-options negate the equivalent sub-options in the Initialize Tangent sub-option list. For instance, with a tangent on an anchor, selecting the appropriate sub-option, Anchor, the tangent will be removed. Because of the similarity between the sub-options in these two options, I won't elaborate on the Hide Tangents sub-options. Split Tangent. This option works in a similar way to the Split Tangent tool I mentioned earlier. If I right-click on the end of a tangent line and select this option, the tangent line will be split at the anchor. This allows each half of the tangent to be moved independent of the other one. Note that once a tangent has been split, the split tangent option changes to the lock tangent option. This lock tangent option will cause the tangent to be locked straight again. The option will then change back to split tangent.
close path. Using the anchor creation tool I described earlier, masks are created by placing anchors in the workspace. The path can be closed at any time by right clicking anywhere in the workspace and selecting this option. The last three options are fairly self-explanatory. Flip horizontally and flip vertically are only available when one or more masks are fully selected and will act on these masks. The duplicate option works on fully selected masks only. With a mask or masks fully selected, this option will create duplicates of those masks. Note that where a mask or group of masks is fully selected, holding the control key down while dragging the mask will also create duplicates. One last thing to deal with before I finish is the workspace tools. These are the five buttons that appear underneath a fully selected mask. Note that these buttons do not appear under groups of fully selected masks. positive mask button. This performs the same function as that in the mode sub-options drop-down list I described earlier. This is the default mode and causes the inside of the mask frame to be masked. Each click of this button will toggle the mask between positive and disabled. The negative mask button. Selecting this button will cause the outside of the mask frame to be masked. Each click of this button will toggle the mask between negative and disabled. The remaining three buttons are for feathering the edge of the mask. Again, these work in the same way as the feather sub-option described earlier. Selecting any of these buttons will expose a slider where the strength of the feathering can be set. Note that the strength of the feathering will apply to all three options, whichever is selected. Feather inside creates a feather inside the mask boundary. Feather both creates a feather on both sides of the mask boundary. Feather outside creates a feather outside the mask boundary. Well, that about wraps it up for this tutorial. Thanks for staying with me until the end. I think you'll agree that was a bit of a marathon. But to get the most out of this very useful tool, it's necessary to fully understand the user interface and all its parameters. In the next tutorial, I want to explore the creation and manipulation of masks in more detail, 
including the creation of simple graphical elements using multiple masks. I'll also look at how masks can be affected by effects plugins. Another thing I'll touch on, maybe, is how to apply motion tracking data to a mask. As always, I welcome any comments or questions you may have. Please consider subscribing and I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.